the expression of disapproval of someone or something based on perceived faults or mistakes. Now, I don't like that definition because criticism is not always negative. So this one I, I like better. The act of passing judgment as to the merits of anything. <clears throat> so handling verbal communication, it takes practice because we usually want to react with a knee jerk. Someone says something to us and we want to react back. So it's a skill that takes practice. It is said that handling criticism is related to our self-image. You know, there's three ways that we perceive ourselves. First is how we think we are, our image. It's from this side of our eyeballs. Then there's the other side is how we think people see us. And then there's the third way, which is how we are. But it's our public image is the way that the book and the material explained is how we think we are getting attacked when we are criticized. So our self-image consists, among other things, is beliefs and values that we have in life. And a lot of it we got as we were growing up from our parents, our siblings, from our schoolmates and friends. <clears throat> Criticism is usually when we feel that someone is judging our public image. So how do we respond? There's three ways. Withdrawing, rationalizing, and counterattacking. And I'm going to introduce a fourth way, which is called responding non-defensively. So the first way, withdrawing. That's just where somebody comes up and tells you something and you just walk off or you leave the room. That's pretty simple. Rationalizing is where you say, you know, you're right, but and you go on with a bunch of reasons. And some people just keep going on and on and on until finally the person that you're trying to explain it to says, uh, you're just full of baloney, you know? So we have to be careful about rationalizing. Then there's counterattacking. Somebody criticizes you and you say, oh, well, you should have seen you do that, and you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And it's just basically what I call kicking up the, the dirt. It's to divert attention to the other person and find their faults. Okay, this responding is a different way. You're responding non-defensively, which is much more, it, it's better. The first step is to listen. Second step is to acknowledge. The third step is to ask questions. Four is to paraphrase. You're gonna tell the person if this is what you're hearing. And then the fifth, you can use or not use you agree with any truths that the other person is, is uh, criticizing you with. And I say that because sometimes the criticism is entirely not truthful. So step one, listen. The person's criticizing you. What you want to do is you want to have some respect. Don't interrupt. And it's also non-defensive. It's also a way of remaining calm and serene. So then you move on to acknowledge. It doesn't mean you agree, only that you agree there's a problem. If you can do that, that's the first step in resolving an issue. The third step is to ask questions. We're gonna demonstrate, Sam and I are gonna demonstrate that. So that somebody may say something to you, you can ask questions. The fourth step is to paraphrase which is to read back what you heard. So this is what you're saying. You're saying da 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 At this point, the problem is being addressed. The fifth step is agreeing with any truth. So you can say, you're right. I did write on the whiteboard. I did kick you, whatever it is. So when you're agreeing with the truth, the steps here are to remain calm while they're talking. Don't take it personally. Use nonverbal listening skills, not this kind of thing, but look at them in the eye. Maybe smile. Some people like, like smiling when they're crit criticizing you. Nod and, and uh, kind of lean towards the speaker. 
the idea here is to show respect. If the person is yelling and screaming, you can say, it is clear that this is really upsetting to you. Let's try to talk about it. So now we're going to move on to uh, part two. Sam and I are going to act something out. He's going to criticize me, and I'm going to try to respond properly. I'm going, to I'm going to try to handle the criticism. And I've been trying to do this for years, and I think I can handle it here. So, uh, Mr. Timer, can you put on uh, two to three minutes on the clock, please? Actually, I'm sorry, three to five minutes. So it's three, four, and then five. So come on up, Sam. Mario. Yes. I'm pretty disgusted with the results you provided for me. I ordered a fresh whiteboard. And I paid good money, and I even gotten some good references about you from other friends and such. But what do you deliver me? This mess. You give me this old looking whiteboard that's literally already bombarded with the words from some previous owner. <laughs> and I'm going, I got scammed. And you know what? I've been scammed throughout my life. And so I, I thought, for once, I'll find somebody with integrity. But you have proved me wrong. Please tell me why. Well, you know, Sam, I did get you the whiteboard. And yes, there is writing on it, and it does look used. And we did mount it, just like you said. And for the price you paid, you know, maybe it was my fault about the communication. I thought you wanted a used one. I don't remember discussing getting you a new whiteboard. So uh, let's try to make out, uh, work out a deal here. Okay. I remember I specified new. Let's find out how that got lost. Okay. And how we go from there. Okay. Now, obviously what I did not get was used. And I thought I was paying adequate money to justify a new whiteboard. I don't know if something miscommunication in your shop got things mixed up. I don't know. But apparently, I got the wrong product. Yes, you mounted it right. It's the right size. But this thing looks like it's ready to be replaced. <laughs> I don't understand why you interpret new as this 10-year-old thing that I could barely read off anymore because of the background stuff no longer washes off anymore. And since we're a relatively new company ourselves, we're open fresh everything. But what do I get? A damn whiteboard with bombarded with words already. I completely you guys didn't even sorry. bother cleaning it? <laughs> I'm sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> I thought you were done. I completely understand your frustration. If I had ordered a whiteboard, this is what you're saying, if I had ordered a brand new whiteboard, I too would have expected it to be brand spanking new, not looking like it was used with somebody writing on it. So I understand that completely. So how about, and, and the other thing is, is there was a miscommunication and it was my fault. I should have written new on the invoice. When it went out, the guys ordered, they looked at the price and they just got you this used whiteboard here. So how about if I take like $100 off to give you a hundred dollars credit towards your next purchase, would that satisfy you? <laughs> Actually, I can use a hundred dollars because you give me one marker, I can use multiple colors, and that'll help me get started on that. This can relatively be cleaned off. I think I can make a hundred dollar refund work for you. Okay, I really apologize. Next time I'll be more clear in my communication. I totally appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Sam. You bet. Okay. Okay, Mr. Timer, can you put two to three minutes on the clock, please? Come on, Sam. 
Okay. So how do you think I handle that? I think you did pretty good. You recognize there was a failure in the order, and and you win the best as you come up with a solution, and it's a satisfactory solution. So I thought I was happy with it. I mean, it is a usable whiteboard. It's just not quite the fresh look I want, but a hundred dollars, yeah, a little scrubbing, a little elbow grease. We can make this thing work out. <laughs> so, so I believe overall, I think you done good, and I appreciate you didn't get all mad, and frustrated, and busted, and turn around and walk off or anything like that. That's something I did not want to see. <laughs> so, how did everybody think that we presented this? Uh, Taking criticism, friendly criticism. I just got a question. Did you guys mean to miscommunicate at the end? Did we mean to miscommunicate at the end? Well, we, we kind of talked about it. Well, I mean, okay, so I guess my point is at the end, you said you'd give them a $100 credit. Sam said a $100 refund. Mm -hmm. That is two completely different things. That is. Yeah, yeah. So it's, was that discussed? Was that on purpose? No, that wasn't on purpose. That was a miscommunication. Yeah, that was another miscommunication. That was a, right, another miscommunication. <laughs> <laughs> so did you learn? Yeah, there you go. But it worked in your favor. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So I gotta go back and spend a hundred dollars on the store. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so does anybody think we can have done a better job at presenting it? I thought it was very um I mean, I know that you probably practiced it in advance, but if this were a real situation, I thought that was really good thinking. Well, actually, we didn't. We just got a general scenario yeah, and details, and we just worked out live here. Because we're not allowed to, on this particular exercise, we're not allowed to really rehearse. We just set up a scenario and flow along with it almost spontaneously. And so the steps, oh, thank you, the steps. Um, I know you're limited by time and everything, but in any negotiation that I was in in insurance when mistakes were made, there's always something that the other person wants that you haven't addressed that they would bring it up. So, I mean, that was a point where Sam should have said, well, I don't necessarily want to spend more money at your, your store. I want the refund. You should have put it explained yeah, why yeah, that was yeah, the yes. case. And then you would have had to try to negotiate from that point, but he didn't. He didn't have <coughs> another point. So. Great. Well, similar to what Vince just said, because I literally just had a situation like this where they started off trying to negotiate me down, and I told him what mm -hmm. I wanted up front. Eventually, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him what I wanted up front because I felt as though I was the injured party. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wish he would have started off that way, that way you probably would have had to see what could you do yes. to accommodate him versus what this is what I'm going to do. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. Yeah, the rest of the conversation. <laughs> Mario, Sam. <laughs> Mario, these speeches where there's a lot of role playing are never my favorite speeches. They just, I just don't care for them a whole lot. I don't, I mean, trying to give them is difficult because you never know how it's going to go. And I know you can practice a little bit, but it's still, it's still, to bring somebody else into a speech that you have to give and take credit for his response is always difficult to do. So I thought you did, overall, I thought you did a very good job. One of the, this was a three-part speech. The first part was to talk about diffusing conflict and you, know, you went through several scenarios including withdrawing, rationalization, counterattack, responding, and then there was a whole other subcategory for responding. And I thought you did a fairly good job going through those and talking about them. Where I thought you could have improved slightly was the injection of humor. This is a very dry, dry speech. And I thought there were some opportunities you had. Now Sam over here nailed it twice <laughs> with the use of the word of the day. <laughs> he bombarded 
<laughs> Your speech. You got a chuckle when you offered your $100 refund from everybody in the group. Because I have just gone through this. I, when I come back from Hawaii a couple of weeks ago, I got bumped on my Hawaiian flight. And they, of course, all they want to do is just give you a refund for a future flight. So uh, you jumped in and you, Marguerite jumped in and said, you know, suggestion of starting what you want, and that's exactly what I did. When they brought up, brought, brought, brought all, brought us up, and they said, "Okay, you guys, we're gonna bump you," mm -hmm. and we got too many people for the plane, and I said, "Okay, here's what I want." Mm -hmm. And in my back of my head, I'm thinking, "Oh darn, an extra night in Honolulu." <laughs> 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 now, what can I get out of this? But I thought you missed a couple of opportunities. You talked about kicking underneath the table or kicking, you know. You could have just made that little notion. Wham! <laughs> or my other favorite one when I was thinking of that was going through my head is uh, was when you were talking about acknowledging. And you, you heard acknowledging. And I, the first thing that came to my head is, was Tim the Toolman Taylor, if you remember that show from <laughs> 10 years ago, and he went, whoa! <laughs> yeah. You know? So, you know, things like that could have just interjected a little humor into your speech that I thought would have helped you, kept the audience focused on, on what you what your message but overall it's a difficult subject but you did a pretty decent job just use a little humor next time